welcome to my channel anybody that's new welcome so today we are going to do some christmas trees um you can get the tumbling tower i just thought i'd show you for people that are new crafters that are new um you can buy these and they also come in a baby blue package i don't have in front of me right now but you can find these in the kids aisle where the toys stuff are i'm gonna use well bond you can buy that at rona lowe's uh hardware stores you can buy it at hobby lobby this is my preference of glue you're more than welcome to use any kind of glue you like i just prefer this one if you worked with blocks before e e6000 works but it's more toxic so you're supposed to wear a mask when you use that if you read the instructions on the bottle i just prefer this one because it's non-toxic and i find it works really well with the blocks now, I do not suggest at all is hot glue unless you're just gluing one or two pieces on. Um, I don't re recommend it at all because then the blocks don't seal properly. And we're, I always, this is if you're working with a lot of Jenga blocks, uh, the L-shaped ruler, carpenter ruler works really well when you're gluing them together to make sure that they're glued even. Now, this Christmas, I really like Christmas cards and uh, I thought I'd throw it out there. I'm kind of like old school with that. You know, when you mail out Christmas cards, I know with um, a lot of people do it online and etc. But if anybody wants to exchange Christmas cards with me, head over to my Crafty Shopper page on Facebook or on Instagram. You can send me a private message with your address and I will send you my address out as well. And we can do a Christmas card exchange. Um, all right. I suggest using a paper and pen when I'm writing stuff down. I always write it before I record uh, just because working with numbers and blocks, it can be a little bit confusing. So just as I write it, write it down, pause, write it down. It's just much easier and then you don't have to watch the video and then get confused with the numbers. When you're gluing the blocks for this specific tree, I know there's a lot of Christmas trees with uh, Jenga that are glued flat. We are not doing flat because we're going to give it volume. It's not going to be a skinny tree. So we're going to glue them sideways, sideways like this and the whole tree is going to be sideways. So when I'm mentioning blocks, it is glued sideways, not like that. Got your pens and paper ready. So we're going to, and you can make this shorter. You don't have to make it as tall you can say for example just make a shorter tree uh you know you could add how many layers you want to it it's really up to your preference on the height i am going to do a big one today well it's going to be big we don't want it that big but it's going to be big so the first row we're going to start off with is two and when we glue them together they're going to be up and down they're not going to be glued on we're not going to be glued like this because then you'll end up with a treat like that so you're going to put them up and down so the first one is two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen that's the rows how many in 17 and 18 so there is 17 rows 17 rows but each one like i just counted down from 2 to 18 so the bottom one being 18 and counting upwards glue those on and when you glue them on just make sure they're even that you put them in between i'm just going to show you when you put the line like that in the center so you just follow the one directly over top and make sure it's even on both sides so you have that nice pyramid shape that looks really well and you're going to want to glue it together so when i just glue it together i just lift it down actually i start from this way and i just move the sections i'll do it like that put the glue and i'll keep doing that all the way up Let's get that glued together and move on to the next step. Now that I got it glued, I just wanted to say that I did add the, an extra, just one block on the top. 
So now there will be 18 rows and it total will be 171 blocks. I don't know why it didn't, I don't know, it just didn't phase me until I put it together thinking I should have just put one more block on top. You're not really gonna see it anyways because you're gonna have a, we're gonna have a star um, decor on top, so it doesn't matter. I am going to paint it now with pine green. Normally, if you've watched some of my other videos, I usually use a file, um, an electric hand drill, and I usually just take the edges off, but we're not gonna see it because we're gonna do the pine green and we're gonna paint all around it, on the bottom, both sides, give that a coat, and then we're gonna add some floral moss. Now with the floral moss, it is very, very messy. I would suggest putting, I don't know, opening up a plastic bag, garbage bag, um, anything that you have on hand, just cause it can get really messy. I know when I did the, did a rabbit, not last spring, the spring before, it was really messy and it gets really sticky on your hands. And then we're just gonna use some glue, once the green paint is dried, then I just wanna put the green paint underneath because I don't want, I don't wanna put too much floral moss on that you have to cover every little patch because you see the Jenga blocks. I just rather have it totally green and that's probably the closest green that I could find to the floral moss. Now, when you open up with the floral moss, I would get a little bowl and I'm just gonna do it on here because it's already coming out of the package. Because it comes in bigger pieces like that, I would just kind of like make it a lot more into smaller pieces. And when we put them on, you can use, um, what do you call it? Um, why is I'm not thinking of it right now? Um, Mod Podge to put it on. Or you could just use some white glue, white glue, but you gotta make sure that it dries clear. I do have both and I'll probably just use Mod Podge, but if you don't have Mod Podge. And so once you have the paint is totally dry, then you're just gonna break this. I'm gonna break this up now and put it in a, a little bowl for when I get ready to put the green moss. And I just thought it would give such a real effect of it. Um, just like a nice Christmas tree outside, just a nice look to it. So let me get it painted and get the moss on and then we'll go to the, the, um, the stump. So now we'll do the bottom part of the base of the tree. I'm going to try to do a couple different variations of the base, but for the tree with the moss, the first tree we're doing, we're just going to get a Jenga block like this. We're going to put three right underneath it, kind of making a rectangular. And in the middle of this rectangular, We're just gonna go like this and like that, glue it together on top, as you can see. And then I'm just gonna glue those together and then I'm just gonna stain it with some gel stain that I have, more of a rustic look like I have did on some of my other Jenga blocks. And then I will bring back the tree, glue it on, and then I'll show you what else we'll do to the tree. When I got it glued together, um, I did like it, but I just, when I put the tree on it to look at it, I wanted the base bigger. So I'm gonna add an extra two blocks on this side, one on each side, and then another, just to give it a bigger base and better support for the tree since it is made of Jenga. It's a little bit heavier. So I am just gonna glue these pieces on. And then, like I said before, I was just gonna stain it with gel. And this one is just chestnut and it's the mini, mini wax, min wax. All right, so I glued the base on and I'm glad that I put the coat of green underneath the tree. It just, uh, you won't see the little spots if you didn't do it. So if you're gonna do it with the moss, the floral moss, I would suggest that you actually paint it underneath because there's little spots, tiny little spots. And if you don't paint it, you're gonna see through the, the wood of the Jenga. I did find this spray, the adhesive, adhesive spray from DT and I sprayed it on. I just sprayed it on on one part and I didn't do it. So I'm gonna give it another coat before I glue these on, but I just wanna let you know, you can get that from DT just so it sticks a lot better. If you hear anybody laughing, giggling in the background, it's my son, I got a couple doors shut and I can still hear him. So I don't know if you guys can hear him or not. Um, 
I had this, it was in my, I just opened some of the drawers of, I haven't brought out all my Christmas stuff and my local DT doesn't have all their Christmas stuff out, but I had one of these hanging stars. It was actually silver and I wanted to do this one with gold on it. So I just spray painted it with some gold and I'm just going to glue it on top right here, making sure the top part is sticking up with the star and both are on the side, not like this. You want it like that. You're just gonna hot glue that on. On the base of the tree, I just have these little pine cones. They're actually from Dollarama, but you can find little things. Maybe you wanna put little Christmas presents on the bottom with some snow, it's really up to you. I did find all these little bells from Dollarama that I think are super cute. They're small enough. You need smaller ornaments, but you don't have to put ornaments. You can put like some bells, maybe with some jute rope hanging whatever your preference is, it's just the different ideas. It came in three different sizes from Dollarama, so I will just hot glue them on. I'm not gonna put the little strings on them because that will take forever. I'm just gonna put them in hot glue and I'm just gonna do it around the sides and the back as well. And at the end of the video, I'll show you everything upright, all in a line and I'll go through all the trees that I've done and I think it turned out pretty well. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to start on the next tree. So I just wanted to come back before we start the second tree. I uh, added a garland. I just had a roll of this ribbon, which actually had four. It was four wide. Uh, oh, it's right here. Oops. Four wide. Oh, five, six wide. I just ended up cutting a bunch of strips off it and I just wrapped it around and hot glued. I just thought it just with the gold and the star, I'm trying to use what I have at home. My local DT is just starting to bring Christmas stuff out on the bottom around the Jenga block base. I wanted to add some more gold. I had this ribbon until I took the plastic off. I didn't realize that it's um, tape. So I cut it in half and did a trim. I still want to add something here. I still feel there's something more. So I'm hoping in the next couple of days, I haven't dug through all my Christmas stuff yet. So I'm hoping to add something a little different. So at the end of the video, if there's something a little different that I will mention it at the end of the video. Now let's start this tree number two. All right, so we're gonna start the second tree now. And we're gonna use our L-shaped ruler like always. And you're gonna glue flat ways, um, blocks of two, and we're going to do, well, there's 22 blocks, so there's two, four, six, eight, well, uh, 10, 11. So 11 blocks on each side, but they're times two. So you need 11 ones like this on one side, and you need 11 twos, on this side so these are 44 blocks with this tree you're going to only need one under one block you'll need a box of jenga but it will be 56 and i think in a box is 72. so we're going to start with this and then we'll talk about the base after i'm just going to use the ruler to make sure on the angle when we're gluing them so you're just going to start like this and glue that corner right down the side. So you're just gonna put glue here and then you're not gonna touch it. I'm just gonna leave it overnight. Then we're gonna to move to the second one. So each side has 22. You just gotta do it carefully. And why I brought the ruler is to make sure they're even and they're not lopsided. So you're just gonna to have to move it down and just double check. This one looks off a bit. It's hard unless I'm gluing them. Don't use hot glue. Next row. So I think this one needs to be moved out a bit more. So I would suggest gluing per section and just using this ruler to make sure they're, so this one might need going down this way a bit. 
There we go. So I don't make this little part of the video super long. So you're going to do that all the way down. I'm just going to do it fast. But once I glue it, I'm just going to be very careful to make sure that you glue them. And you try to keep the distance in between here, the one that you go under with all of them. I'm not even going to measure them. That's why I just keep using the ruler just to make sure that it will be an even base as you go along. I'm just gonna move these here. And then you're gonna have it to right about there. And then we have one piece there's six rows of two and it's flat. It's going to be like this and it's going to go here. It'll give you enough room, even if it's a little bit smaller, that's okay. It's not a problem. And that's how you're going to want to glue this. We're only going to do the one section. We're not going to make it double up higher, thicker. We're just going to leave it like this. I'd suggest doing it and leaving it overnight and then we can proceed on to the next step. So I let it uh, dry overnight. I think it turned out really well. So you can leave it like this, but after playing around and just looking at it, um, which is fine, you'll see later what I wanna do to the back of it. We are gonna put a backing on it and that's if you want. You can keep it open if you want to, uh, depending maybe you have a different idea. Um, I want to add one more layer. Only reason why is I want to add a shelf in there. So I glued one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, I glued an extra ten blocks in for the shelf, and I'm just gonna show you here. And it fits right there. Now, depending on on what your angle is, if you try to do it here. If it is a bit too tight, you can always just file the edges on it just to make it fit in. It fits in here well. The only thing is the shelf is too long because it is flat glued this way, which is fine. So I'm going to add an extra 11 on each side. Now, if we glue it in, it, this is the easy part because now this is solid. You're just going to add one more layer. Make sure you put the glue on this side when you're going down. I'm gonna add another layer all the way down. And then it actually evens out for the shelf. And you can see right here. Okay, it's not perfect guys, cause I, my head's not over, but it evens out right nicely with the shelf that it gives you a little bit more room to put something on there. Now, if you don't wanna do that, you just wanna do the tree by itself and the stem, which we'll get to later, then that's fine. But I wanna do it so I can put some, I have little ideas what I wanna do with the little shelf. So we're just gonna add them. I'm not gonna do it all on camera, all the way down. And the same thing with the bottom part. So on the bottom, we had 12 blocks. Now we're just gonna add another exact same style. We're just gonna add another six. So with the sides going originally were 22 and 22 on each side and the bottom was 12. We're adding a six blocks to make it come up and then the sides one layer up. So another 11 and another 11. So that for just the tree, not the trunk, I'm not, I didn't add the trunk yet. It actually, each side is 33 blocks on each side and the bottom part is gone to 18. So the 33 and 33 is 66. And then we add the 28 blocks. So it goes to 84 blocks just for that. So it's just over a box of, um, of Jenga. So I think it's gonna turn out really well. Let me get these glued on and we'll move on to the next step. Okay, I got the top layer glued on. I did put the shelf in. I'm gonna opt out with the shelf, but it also, 
gives you an idea if you want to do a shelf in here or not. You just got to find out, play with blocks to see one where it'll uh, fit. Mine fits right there. I would just put some hot glue just to make sure that it's sealed on there good. Now, when I built it up, you can skip that second step of doing two and adding one, obviously. You just have to glue three blocks. When I did two, you can do three, and that's 11 rows on one side, and the exact same on the other side, three and 11 rows. And then we just added the one extra row of six to make it wider on the bottom, and it turned out really well. I am gonna add hot glue just on the top in here for just to raise up the middle so it's not so um, L shape, I guess pointy, make it more, raise the height on that, as well as I'm going to reinforce on both sides some hot glue in there. Once that done, that's done, I'm gonna paint it, just use some DT white paint. I will probably have to give it a couple coats. I am not doing any filing on this one like I've done on my other Django blocks. I'm gonna leave it the way it is because I think it just looks great the way it is. Now the backing, you don't have to put a backing on. Maybe you want it see-through. This one, I am gonna put a backing on it. I'd rather use cardboard, like thick construction paper, but they, I don't have any on hand, so I use foam board. It's a little bit tedious to cut, especially if you have to do the zigzags. But if you mark it properly, you should be able to, and I'm not gonna stick my head under the camera to make sure this is even, that it won't stick out on the sides. I think I have a little bit of a gap on the top just a tiny little bit, but that's okay, I'm not worried about it. Now, you could use your favorite wrapping paper to put on the back. You could use some tissue, some napkins with the Mod Podge. I'm gonna do the Mod Podge, but I am gonna use this gift bag, not sure where I got it from. It's from Stash from last year. And I'm gonna do this more of a white, some bling um, lights in it. It's not fully cut properly. Once I glue it on, I will do the trimming of it. I left the top a little bit longer just for the fact that I had that little gap in there. And I wanna put it like this. Once I get it painted with this glued on, then we're gonna come back and work on the trunk. Now that I got the back glued on, I think it turned out really well. So the next thing, um, I just wanted to do a little bit of frosting on the sides of the tree. I'm just gonna use a thin little brush and I'm just gonna put little strokes near the end, kind of like a frosting tip, but I am just gonna use some Dollar Tree and I am just gonna use some silver. Uh, you could use any color, you can skip this step. And just all the way down, just a little bit of silver all the way on both sides. And I'm just gonna use Mod Podge, like I said. Once I do that, I'm gonna make the base since I'm already gonna be playing around with glitter. And you know, when you play with glitter, it ends up in your hair and all over you for a couple days. So the base, uh, the trunk of the tree is 24 blocks. We're gonna do eight side by side, two, uh, four rows of two. Then you're gonna make four of these, it's just four, 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 and four. You're gonna glue those four together to stand upright like this. And then it's just gonna sit on top. And you can glue that down. And I'm just gonna use the Mod Podge in glitter. If I see any bare spots, I'm gonna go over with another coat. And then I'm gonna glue it onto the tree. So I did with the glitter on the side. I think I used a little bit too much as I would want it a little bit thinner with the brush, but that's okay. I'm still trying to clean my hands from glitter. I am going to, I'm just gonna to try to set this sideways so I can show you. I wanna put some ribbon down the side, just to break it up a bit. And I just got this roll from DT. It's just sparkle fringe glitter. Glitter, fringe glitter sparkle ribbon and I'm not going to glue it tight I'm going to do it on both sides of the tree and I'm just going to glue just a little dab and I'm going to leave it a little space and I'm just going to show you putting it down because I don't want it to be straight and it can give you a little bit more volume 
just like like that as you can see just it gives a little bit more definitions to the side of the tree going down just a little bit giving it just putting it up a bit and just a little dab of hot glue like that I'm going to do that all the way down the sides now for the tree top there's many different options DT has well, I've had this for my stash last year and I just saw as they're putting stuff in you could have um you'd have to clip the part off where there's a little circle to hang it you can use one of these which is really cute i'm just going to use one of these it was just a topper for our small tree i already cut it off and i'm just going to put it in the center on top now it's only because this part has a gape that you can put it straight in the center on the top with this one you can kind of do it but there's still, these are still a little bit too long, so you'd actually have to put it on the front of the tree, which is totally fine as well. And then I decided that I wanted to, um, I wasn't gonna put lights in it, but now I think putting lights in it would just brighten it up and it would look really nice that you could turn it on at night. <clears throat> I bought these ones from, they're not from Dollar Tree, they're just a pack that I got on Amazon. I think there was like, 10 of them for $20 here in Canada on the amazon.ca site. I'm sure you can get them for a little bit cheaper if you're across the border. We just pay a little bit more than you guys do for some things. Um, I'm just gonna turn them on here. I just stretched it out and bent it straight in half so it should go enough around on the inside. And I'm just gonna hot glue it right to the bottom of the corner of the trees all the way down. Now to get it in there, I had a little hole that I was just gonna cover up because my gift bag wasn't um, wide enough. So I have a little, little hole that you can see there. But if you don't have one and you use a bigger gift bag or gift wrapping, you could use one of these tools from DT and just make a hole and just make it bigger and stick the wire if you wanna put the wire in. Um, that's up to you optional. I mean you could do it on the outside as well I just thought it would brighten it up for the stuff that's on the inside I'm gonna get those done and we'll move on So the ribbon looked really good. I really liked the the little extra bump that I put in on this side I added the star So I did as you can see I just used um, a tweezers to kind of bend it and hold it around the corner so it actually the light went really well on the back as you can see i just left it out and i made sure now you can use the bot battery operated one if you don't have the little the little slim um battery pack because you're not going to see it on the back of the tree anyways and you just glue it on but when you glue on the battery pack no matter what you use make sure that you have the part that you can actually lift it and change the batteries if need be so if you glue it the wrong way, you're gonna have to pull it off the foam board and it's gonna more likely rip. So I think it turned out really, I'm happy that I put the lights in. I changed my mind and put them in. So the next thing we're gonna do, I did the base already. I've got glitter everywhere. So I did do the glitter base, turned out really well. I will add that last, it's just much easier to play around holding the tree part. You just attach it, make sure it's centered. And I'm gonna do that at the very end. So on the inside, depending on what you wanna do, Dollar Tree has these uh, deer. You could put one in, kind of do the opposite that they're looking like each other. I have one from Dollarama. I'm not sure if Dollar Tree sells these ones. It was just a plain deer, uh, just the see-through fake glass ones. And I just added a bit of fun fur around the neck and just a little silver bead and just hot glued it right on, which I will stand the deer right here. I don't want to add too much in there because you want to kind of see the background too. Kind of kind of looks cool with the candle. All depends on what you use for the background. Now, Dollar Tree, no, Dollarama. And our Dollarama for my American friends, uh, Dollarama is very similar to Dollar Tree. It's more of a five dollar and under store but they do carry a lot of the same brands and the same items in there but these ones I got I'm trying to find the packet for them and I can't find it now they were just little tiny um Christmas balls 
but I don't see where my other pack is. So I'm gonna put three of them on there. I'm gonna play around and put three. I don't know if I'm gonna add more. I didn't have a Dollar Tree does sell jewelry cord, you know, the really thin cord. I'm gonna opt for my fishing line. It's very, it's very see-through, so you're not gonna notice it. I just tied it on there. And I'm gonna use my tweezers when I do it. I'm gonna hang three. So I'm gonna use, I got two clear and just one matted, I guess, look. Then you're gonna have to figure it out. Don't look at my nails because my nails desperately need and I've been so busy at work. I haven't had time to go get them done. They're in desperate need to be done. So when I hot glue it, I'm gonna stick the hot glue right there. I'm gonna stick it up in the middle and you're gonna to have to hold it and I'm gonna just, you gotta measure the length where you wanna hot glue it on. You don't have to do the inside of the tree if you want. If you wanted to do it a lot easier, you could just do it on the on the outside of the, the Jenga block right on the outside of the tree to hang it. I'm gonna to try to hang it in the middle on the inside and make sure my tweezers don't get stuck to it. I have to do it shorter. I want it hanging, I know it's so hard to show, right about here and with the other two coming down on the side. Can't even see the, the line on there. I'm just gonna throw some Dollar Tree fake fur along the bottom. I am just gonna glue it and I'm just gonna not use hot glue. I'm just gonna use some, uh, I don't have it in front of me, just the um, white glue from Dollar Tree and just put some fake, fake snow down and I'm just gonna add some little presents. These are just from Dollarama. They're just cheap little things. You can make your own. Maybe have some other on hand. Uh, and I'm just gonna stick the presents right there and glue this base on. And then we will start the next tutorial for the third tree. Okay, before we start tree three, at the end of the video, I'll turn the camera around and I will show you them all upright standing. Uh, it's a little hard with uh, YouTube that you can't do vertical, everything has to be horizontal. So for the starting of tree three, we are gonna use 111 blocks. I always suggest keep a pen and paper um, just so it's easier to keep the number that we're doing. This one I'm gonna do a, a four tier and just kind of more of like a I guess a Christmas tree shelf, if you want to call it. So we're going to start and we're just going to glue them all. When you're gluing them all on sides like this, they're all going to be flat when they're glued together like that. And they're going to be on an angle. So you got to be, when you glue them, I'd suggest leaving them for a good six hours plus, no matter what glue you use, just to make sure that the glue actually dries fully. And then after reinforcing the corners, and I'll show you that after. So we're gonna start at the top of the tree. You're gonna need seven on one side, seven on the other. And you're just gonna do a point, <clears throat> excuse me, like the other tree. Then you're gonna add the base of it, which is eight blocks across. And you're gonna put it on an angle like this. So when you're gluing them, put the glue on the edge here and here as well, just like you will do at the base. And that will be pretty much on the edge for all of them except well, kind of the bottom too. So, and you, depending on the angle, I wanna make sure that I have a little bit of each block on each end hanging over so it gives more of the effect of the tree. The next one's gonna be seven and seven again. And we're gonna attach that right under that shelf on an angle. Now the bottom row is 12 across and you're just gonna have to place it like this. The next one's gonna be seven and seven again on an angle right under the shelf. We're not gluing it to the sides. Remember, we're just keeping an overhang on the sides. Seven and seven. The bottom part of this shelf is 15. I'm not gonna look so I don't know if it's straight because then I'll, my head will be in, under the camera, but you just wanna make sure you're even as you go along gluing them. And the last row will be seven and seven again, 
right underneath. And the bottom row is 15, or sorry, 20. And the bottom row, I'm not gonna have the overhang. I'm actually gonna put the bottom part right on top of the bottom shelf. So you just have the three overhangs. I just know if it's this, like this, I don't know. I just prefer to have it on here for the extra support than relying on this support to hold the whole thing where just more support. Now we'll go through it again. So seven and seven, eight, seven and seven, 12, seven and seven, 15, seven and seven, 20. Now you can omit a shelf if you want. You can take that part and just make a three tier one. You could, add it. I wouldn't do two because it wouldn't be as big, but, or you can add another tier as well if you wanna go down to sevens and sevens and then it would probably be like 25 or 26 if you wanted to add an extra layer to make a bigger one. But I think this one's gonna turn out really cool. It's gonna be a little bit different than my other one. So I'm gonna get this glued and I'm gonna leave it for the rest of the day to dry and then we'll move on from there. So I let it six, sit for a few hours and I found that it was still a bit wobbly. I just took Wellbon and I actually just opened the cap and I did the exterior painting more glue. It still wasn't sturdy to what I liked. So I used some hot glue in the edges here, as you can see, it's kind of a little bit messy, but it's no worry because we're gonna cover it up anyways. And it's super solid, as you can see. I liked it, it turned out well. I'm glad that um, I let it dry extra, but the hot glue really made a difference. Uh, I wouldn't suggest when you attach it to use hot glue, I'd let it sit only because it won't sit flush. As you know, hot glue just is thick and it would be uneven. So I suggest using the hot glue second as opposed to trying it just hot gluing it together first. So I'm just gonna show you while I don't, before I put the back on. So I grabbed a piece of white board, white foam board, and I just put it over like this, as I already cut it, as you can see. And I just traced it out. I wouldn't sit, worry about the corners here too well because you're not gonna see in between the crack here anyways. And this is gonna be the backing of it, but we're gonna come back to that later. I just wanted to show you, and I just put front because if you actually turn it over, it doesn't match up properly. As you can see, one side sticking out a little bit more than the other. So I just wanted to make sure that I knew what side when I go to do it, that will be the front. We are gonna cover this with something after, but we're gonna do that later. I don't have the container in front of me. So if you watched, um, I'm trying to think of what I did. I'm looking around me. I did the paper towel mache and I really liked how it turned. I did the Jenga block coffin and, and I did the, um, oh yeah, the pumpkins, the Jenga block pumpkins. And I really like the texture of it. And I found too that it gives it a good hold. So I wanna do that because I wanna paint it red, but I just think it's gonna just be too, I guess too much um, squareness. And plus when you do the paper towel mache, you can round out corners like on the top here. I'm not gonna do any filing that I normally do for my other tutorials. Um, I usually do the filing. I am not gonna do that. I am gonna do the inside and the outside and just paint some white glue on. I'm just gonna find it here, I don't know where it is. This Dollar Tree has this big bottle of white glue. I'm not gonna use Mod Puzz. I just say before Mod Puzz comes in that little bottle and you're gonna have to use a bunch of bottles. But if you have a big bottle of it, you're more than welcome to use it. This also just puts a strong hold. It dries fast and it dries clear. Just painting it on with a paintbrush, the white glue. And I'm just, I have a bowl of these already ripped up somewhere. And I'm just gonna go over all the areas, the inside and out, but I am going to omit the back of the the back of the tree only because you want this a solid, um, a, like a flat fit to the back, and you don't want with the paper mache it can get bumpy, so it won't flip. Sorry, it won't glue flat on the back. So I would just omit the back of the tree, and but doing the front, the sides. I'm gonna do the up and down. I'm just gonna go to town on this. 
So I am gonna do that. And once we do that, we'll go back to the back of the tree on the back, what we'll do with the backing. Cause I wanted to use a gift box and I think it's super cute. Um, that will look really nice just to bring the Christmassy theme out. Now I did all the sides and I did the shelves and I did also underneath, not the bottom. Um, I let it dry overnight just because it takes a couple good five, six hours or more, but I just left it overnight to make sure it's solid. Now you can pick any color. I'm going to do red, just I'm trying to do a little bit different on each tree. And my favorite DT red is the Tuscany red, and I'm going to give it a, a coat or two. I'm going to let it dry a coat and see if sometimes there's, especially with the paper towel, there's little spots that don't saturate all the paint. And then I'll just go over with the second coat. So now we're going to do the backing while the stand is on its a uh, little bit of a touch up coat on the second coat. Um, I just took, I had some wrapping paper and it's not from DT, it's from I think HomeSense or from last year. I just looked at my stash. Um, I did want to use a gift box that I have, but I wanted to put little red trucks in it, but the red trucks weren't really lining up and they were a little bit bigger. So I just got some Christmas paper, traced it out with, with using this as tracing it. Um, I did put some, uh, just some white packing tape around the edges, just because with the foam board, sometimes you can just see the little bit of the foam sticking out. And I guess it was, uh, was annoying me. So I just went along the sides and did it all the way around just so that it wouldn't fall, like start peeking out from the sides. So I'm going to glue this on. I'm just going to spread when you're doing it. Um, just make sure that you don't get any air bubbles and start from one end and just keep going all the way down as you're gluing it on. Start at the top and just kind of roll your way down and go that you can make sure that you're not getting any air bubbles in it. Once that's done, I am just going to use some Wellbond and sit the stand right on it and let it let it uh, glue right onto the stand. And then once that's done, we'll go on to the base. Now, while I'm waiting for the backing to dry onto the tree, we're gonna make the trunk and we're gonna do, I haven't even glued these ones together, uh, sideways like that, four, another four, another four, and another four. So you have 16. You're gonna glue them together like this. The bottom part is 10 and we're just gonna glue it right on there once it's dried. Make sure it's even, it's three, three blocks on each side available. So the trunk itself is 26 blocks. The top part of the tree is 111. So for tr this tree number three will be 137 blocks. So I got the backing glued on pretty secure, really happy with it. Uh, in the um, wrapping paper, I just noticed there was a little bit of, um, just a little bit of bubbling in a few spots, but that's okay. You don't really notice it. I guess, uh, you know, when we do our craft, we notice it, but with the line, cause it's kind of a ribbed, um, wrapping paper. So you can't really see it. There's just tiny little, little spots. I would suggest using the cardboard one. And the one I was originally gonna use was this one. It's from DT, it's just a big um, one gift box, large one. I just didn't like that you couldn't see a full truck in the scene. I don't know. Um, that's why I went with the wrapping paper. But I'm sure they don't have any in our stores now. There's just starting to get the Christmas stuff in. So there wasn't much to pick from. But like I said, I found this one in my stash. I actually painted the black or the back of it red just so you couldn't see anything from the sides. And I like the fact that I wrapped the ends and that I didn't have to paint that foam because I tried painting it once before on a craft and I didn't like it. So it's secure now. I just used some gel stain for the base. Turned out well. I'm just gonna leave it plain. I don't wanna go overboard with it. So I'm just gonna leave it. I'm gonna turn it this way though to go right underneath. I will glue that off camera. So on the sides, like I did similar to the bling, 
Tree, except I'm not going to use glitter. I'm actually going to use some Dollar Tree fake snow and I'm just going to brush the edges a little bit just with some Mod Podge and just put a little bit of sprinkle, bring it down on the front a little bit to add a little bit more character to the tree. On the top, I think I'm just going to stick. I'm just gonna stick some greenery right in there because you're not gonna see much because I'm gonna hang. Now, there's only a couple little things at DT that I could find and I found this one in my in my own personal Christmas stuff that hung on the tree. It's from Dollarama. And I'm just gonna stick that as the star on top. For the inside bottom layer, just some fake DT snow. It will just pop more than being so deep red. Now these have been new. I don't know if they had them this year. This one's from this one. There was a couple, I got three of these. Now there was a um, penguin. I got the Santa. I got the gingerbread that looks like part of his head is bitten off and a little um so as you can see there's just a tiny little hole on top i actually just i don't have my pliers i don't know where they've disappeared to they just unscrew right out of them they're not really noticeable anyways the little holes and i'm going to stand them up on the inside i'm going to stick that one there that one there i think this one here, we'll put this one here for now. I got this little tree, it was actually longer. I actually just clipped it shorter so it could fit in there. I'm gonna stick a little present in there as well. Dollar Tree came back this year with the little sleighs. Uh, I'm just gonna cut this off. And I got some little fake little Christmas presents. Gonna pop them right inside. Gonna, he's gonna go right here with Santa. Now to keep these up, I'm not gonna glue them right on the back. I want them out a little bit. I don't want them glued on the back. I'm just gonna take some little um, wood cubes from DT and glue it right on the back. And I'll show you one right now. I got my hot glue on and that it will stand upright. As you can see like this. Now when I do that, I am just gonna paint a little bit around the back of them. Um, just the color, I'm gonna just paint this black so it blends in and the top part I'm just gonna paint white because we're just gonna put some snow so it doesn't look like uh, that he'll be able to just stand up on his own. They can do that with all of them. The same thing with this one. You could just, because of his back's all black, you could just paint that all black as well. And what else? I was trying, I wish there was more things. I'm not gonna glue any of these down. Uh, there might be some things that I see, and I always, I don't know if you, being crafters yourself, if you ever see stuff, and then you're like, oh, I could have used that in my craft. So. I'm not going to glue all these down. They're just going to be on the cubes and I can just pluck them off if I see something better during the Christmas season. I'm not saying that I don't like them. I just wish I had a little bit more selection to pick from. But I think they totally suit it and it's fine. I had these little balls. These ones are from Dollarama. Just some little Christmas balls. I might just hang a few here or there. And that'll be this, be it for tree number three. Tree number four will be next. Like I said, at the end of this tutorial, I'll show them all done upright and I'll give you the numbers again for each tree, how many blocks I use. And if you ever have any questions, you're ever stuck with any of my crafts, you're more than to, welcome to leave me a comment below or you can send me a private message on my crafty shopper page and I'd be happy to help you. So let me get these glued on and then we'll start the next one. So tree number four is going to be the same build for at least the top part of the tree. And it's 171 blocks. 
you're gonna have to rewind to the front i'm not gonna go through the count again it, the total blocks is 171 so i wanted to do a fun a fun for one i guess uh, if you if that's what you want to call it with fur on it so instead of doing um i know people have used cones but you know i like working with jangle blocks i got this from dollarama it's just fun for like this uh, i'm not sure dt has a bit of different fun fur but nothing like this so this is the one i'm gonna do i did take strips off i'm gonna show you here that i hot glued it oh this little piece came off i did it in strips and i measured the tree from say here would cut this strip and i do it times three and then i would place it on and you can see the black marks with the marker and then I would just literally cut straight. I wouldn't even do the, the little zigzags on the side in getting the three pieces. And I have the front and I have the side for the back. And then for the sides, I did the exact same thing. Actually, it only needed thinner, thinner than this. So I just cut it straight across so it'll go right from top to bottom and I'm just going to hot glue them on it's not going to be anything special um, this one's a little bit easier than most of them other than just getting your fur um, cut so I'm going to get those glued on and then we're going to move on to the next step so I got the fur glued on like I said hot hot glue now I did it all the way around. I just patched and it's kind of flat looking as you can see. I didn't put any in the bottom. I just put a coat of um, gel stain on the bottom. Now I just wanted to, cause I know I messed this up when I was actually cutting the fur and is it looked normal. I was talking to a family member over last long weekend when I was cutting it and I glued the strips. And then until I was looking at it, I'm like, okay, it's going to fit. And I realized if you're going to use the long shag fur, it's upside down. I wanted it to go facing downwards. So just be aware of when you're cutting, if you're using the long shag or you do have a Dollar Tree near you, that you are cutting it properly. Otherwise, it's going to be, to me, it's upside down. So once we have that, I like to... Fluff it up, maybe not so, so we're gonna put a topper on it. Just give it like a nice shag look. And for the base, we are going to use some wood stems, blocks. I had a couple different uh, sizes here. I t found, I had two bags of it, so I used the, just three of them, and I just made sure that they were level, that I was able to put something in it balanced properly, so I just glued three together, and I was just going to leave it like that, but I wanted to add a base to it, so it has a more, glue it onto a solid base, which will give it better for not tipping over. Now, this one, I have, I don't know where I got it from, it has a print, I know it's not from any of the dollar stores i think someone gave it to me a long time ago you can buy the small a little bit they're a little bit smaller i think they only sold the one cookies the wood cookie it was a little bit half probably half this um diameter of the not diameter the thickness but they were a little bit smaller but they are way bigger than this you can get those from dollar tree i just haven't seen them for a while and i have some i just don't know where it is because i'm in the middle of reorganizing all my crafting supplies so and I'm just going to glue that on there I would use well bond or whatever wood glue you're using I would not use hot glue and then I will just put the tree on like that and I think it turned out um it's going to turn out really well I'm not even going to stain it or anything I just like the wood of the the look of just the pure wood the way it looks like and I think it will be just it'll have a nice look without the stain on it all right so i got that glued it's looking well it's very solid love it now for the topper of the tree i'm gonna end up playing with the hair on the tree 
Um, I wanted to do, I guess my kind of theme was I wanted to have like some leather, I don't know why, with fur and reindeers because I love reindeers. My favorite, I think, all-time craft I did was my Jenga block reindeer. It was an inspiration of something I saw at Winners, or not, not Winners, Home Sense. Uh, that was made out of like birch bark and I did the Jenga block reindeer last. I still think that's my favorite. I can't wait to bring them out for Christmas. So I just love reindeers. So I thought it would be great to have like a reindeer on the top. So these ones are from DT. They are in again. They just put a little bit more stuff on the shelf today. I'm not going to, I'm, I already have one that I've done from last year, but you're just going to take this reindeer off. It comes just with some ties in the back. Take that off. I took the neck piece off as well. He was plain looking and then I just added some red buffalo plaid ribbon from DT. Added a little bell. It was one of these. wasn't black so I just painted it with the black uh, DT paint and put a little bit of bodge, Mod Podge. On the back I end up just using a really sharp knife and just turning it like a screwdriver and then I end up cutting in the back because it is pretty um the plastic's very thin enough it's thin enough that you know you can get it off as you can see when I'm pressing it here it's uh pretty light just because I want to put it sitting right on the top of and you'll feel it once you put it in there because if I were to put it this I'm going to show you here if I were to put it this way way the flatness of that it's going to be awkward facing forward and if you put it on there you can do him flush to the tree upright so I'm gonna get him on I'm just gonna place this here I'm just gonna hot glue him on guys and what else so once I do that that will be done the tree now these are little artist boards I've used these in a couple other uh projects that are just from dollarama i think they're just painting like a a painting base for putting paint on that um excuse me that artists use but they're like cheap enough at dollarama that i just buy if you don't have one if you don't want to do base you can just do the tree like that i just wanted to do base i haven't done it like i did the other base like trunks but i wanted an actual base to sit the tree on and I think this just turned out well. I just use the same gel stain that I use for most of my crafts. Worked, I think just, I like the color of the rustic look with the buffalo plaid. Now for the little presents that I've done are just basically, I'll show you. I'm not gonna go through totally how I did them. I basically use little bowl here of Jenga blocks that I use all the time. It's basically three blocks like this and four layers to give me and then when you stick it upright with the four layers it looks like this. I just wrapped it in some DT when they had this faux leather. If you don't have the faux leather leather you can always just paint it black. I just wanted to incorporate leather with it. I don't know why, just that's what I felt like doing. So I just folded it, just all the little corners. I did in gluing it piece by piece with a little bit of hot glue, not a lot of hot glue, because when you're pulling it tight, if you put too much hot glue, you will see bumps in the leather. And then I just wrapped it with the exact same uh, ribbon from DT around it, made a bow. I'm not a best bow maker, so these were the best bows I could make. They're just going to be on each side of the tree when the tree's going to sit up here. The front part, I just wanted to add some little bit of Christmas balls. I got a little package, yes, from Dollarama. I know there's been a lot of Dollarama. Dollarama seems to have a lot of Christmas stuff out compared to my Dollar Tree. And it's almost like, a, um, uh, to me, it's it doesn't smell, but it almost looks, reminds me of... Um, potpourri so and the color was the gold which is the gold in the tree and the reindeer which is good I just 
threw a couple balls on and I'm just gonna glue all these down. I am gonna add some of the DT, some fake snow, just a little bit. I'm not gonna get carried away like I did with the the other craft, the other, the white tree and the red tree, tree two and three. I'm just gonna do a little bit just to add some fun. I think I'll just make it pop more. I just really liked how it turned around, turned out, excuse me. So I'm gonna put these all together, get them just hot glued down with the fake snow. And I'm gonna turn the camera the other way. I'm gonna show you a close up on all of them. And I'm gonna go through the counts for the Jenga blocks on each tree. And then that'll be done for this tutorial. So let me get this done and then we'll come back with the camera turned the other way. All right guys, here they all are. So we'll start off with the first one, the number tree number one. And that one was 185 blocks, the floral. Um, that was a simple base. You can change it up however you want. Maybe you just want to paint it. You could actually do a lot of different things with that one. And that one's actually 17 inches tall because I know people like to ask how tall they are. Um, tree number two we have here is with the reindeer that one was 108 blocks total and 18 inches tall and I did do the light up one I should have put the light up one in the the red one here but I didn't and it's easy enough if you do want to put it you can just put a hole just with this just like do a little hole through the back foam board and you could just put up some uh some lights inside there but i think you'd have to go around the shelves and that probably in the back in and out but it's totally doable for that one i did add a curly uh, bow on top just i split it in half and just to hang down i just think it came out really cute i did decide to keep the little ornaments when i did put the little snow in there i just thought it turned out super cute um the little foam balls on the bottom as you can see right there they're just little foam ones just making it look like a little hill of snowballs that one is 137 blocks total you could actually change that one out and switch it to maybe your granddaughter niece son anybody that likes like say barbie or hot wheels you could change the background and you can paint the tree a different color and they could put their little cars or you could even do minecraft that one's just so interchangeable and just good for little kids that they can keep their little toys on it um super cute i really love it and my favorite one well it's not my favorite i don't know which one's my favorite but the fur one i think is just super cute it is simple and i really like the base i just kept it the way it is um with the trunk i didn't paint it just looks real looking i just like the fur on it just gives it a nice warm cozy look with the little presents and just a bunch of little decorations on the bottom and the fur one is exactly the same build as the first one which is 171 blocks um the first one but the first one had the 14 blocks for the base where this one i just used the wood uh little um chunks from dt so let me know what you guys think in the comments. Uh, I know my tutorial came out a little bit later than I anticipated. Um, just had to make four of them. So uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Happy crafting. If you guys have any questions or if you want some close up more pictures of these, you can always find them on my Facebook Crafty Shopper page. See you guys soon. Bye.